here on the Home Run at 94.9 Power FM. Candice in with you this afternoon and very pleased to be joined on the line by Shara Evans. Now, Shara is the, the founder, the keynote speaker and a technology futurist as well as the CEO of Market Clarity. Shara, how are you this afternoon? Hi, Candice. I'm great. How are you? Very well, thank you. Now, I have called you because last week I had this experience going through uh, one of these supermarkets and it's my regular supermarket and they have just had some self-serve checkouts installed. Now, every time you go to a supermarket, they're always different. But this was a nightmare because it wasn't scanning some of the products that I had. It was really hard to find some fresh produce and there were no staff there to help. And all I could think was this thing that's meant to be convenient is so inconvenient. It took me twice as long to get through. What are your thoughts on self-serve checkouts and how is it actually helping us in the future of our shopping? Well, let me talk about the current technology, which uses barcode scanning to check you out. And frankly, every implementation is different and it's easy to get things wrong. And it sounds like your supermarket didn't fully test before they launched on the unsuspecting public. And you know what, Candice, like you, I've got a lot of produce in my cart. And I find that going to the self-serve checkouts with produce where there's no barcode is a real pain in the rear end (laughs) because you have to navigate the menu systems and they're not always that easy. And as you said, every single one of them is different. Very true. So what's the, I mean, the idea behind this is obviously that the supermarkets are trying to make it more convenient for their shoppers. That's right. And that's the whole idea with barcodes. If everything had a barcode and it worked 100% of the time, then it probably would be more convenient. But you definitely need to have enough staff there for when things go wrong. Now, in the future, that's going to change a bit. And we're probably looking at a bit of a small horizon of maybe five years. And you may have heard of something called the Internet of Things. And really what we're talking about is the fact that computer chips are getting smaller and smaller and smaller and cheaper and cheaper. And they're going to be embedded in everything, including the packaging in a supermarket. So if you can imagine that instead of having a barcode on um, a box that might have cereal or something in it, that chip called an RFID chip, for radio frequency ID is not going to have just the price and the name of whatever the item is. It's going to have information about the contents of the box, like all the product nutrition information that you might find on the label. And imagine having that kind of information about everything in a supermarket, including perhaps even a wrapping that might be on produce, And you walk into a supermarket with your smartphone and in the future with smart glasses and you've got your shopping list there and your phone through talking to the supermarket system guides you to the aisles and exact locations where everything that you want is. Oh my gosh, that is a convenience. (laughs) Yes. Now, and it can go further than that. And what I'm talking about here is a technology called augmented reality, which in effect, superimposes extra digital information on top of what you're seeing in the real world. So if you can imagine you've got your phone and you're walking down a supermarket aisle and maybe you don't have a particular shopping list, but you've said to your application that you're allergic to peanuts and that you're vegan and you don't want to eat anything with animal or dairy products in it. Mm. Imagine that you can point your phone at the aisles and the packages are lighting up with red or green that tells you, look, because they're communicating with this RFID chip, what's in it so that you don't have to look at all the labels. You know, there are some really interesting things that will happen over the coming years that will make shopping a lot more convenient. Now, you were saying as little as five years. I mean, I can't believe that April's just gone. We're, you know, we're almost halfway through 2016. This isn't a long time away that, that packages are actually going to be talking to us. Well, it could even be a lot sooner than that. I think it's really a matter of when all the uh, package manufacturers start putting these chips embedded in the package. The technology is already there to do it now. So we're not talking science fiction. We're really talking about systems integration and about getting these chips 
to a price point where it's cheap enough to basically deploy it on everything and have that uh, throwaway types of packaging. That's what I was just going to ask you. Will there be, uh, you know, an increase in cost? Because not only does that sound expensive, but this is a massive implementation for, for brands which currently have stock on the shelves. And that's where I think the delay might be is that, you know, it's going to roll out in terms of its implementation, but the technology is very, very doable. And there are other reasons that you do, you would deploy something like this. It's not just to help consumers, it's to help all the way in the logistics and tracking process. And there are some real benefits to the companies that um, have the brands of produce or cereals or any other um, item on a shopping market shelf or in any other kind of shelf. doesn't have to be a shopping market. And for logistics and freight companies, so you'll basically be able to track exactly where everything is all the way along the supply chain. And because there will be savings involved in implementing that kind of system, that would really be the impetus for deploying it. Can this kind of technology also let a supermarket know when stock is out of date? Absolutely. And not only that, but it could let you, the consumer, know when something was put on the shelf and what the use-by date is. Amazing. Now, now, having it with a smartphone, you know, and holding your phone up all the time, that can be, you know, a little bit inconvenient because you want your hands free, you've got a trolley, you know, and you might need to use your other hand to take stuff on and off the shelf. But in a, a very, very short time frame, um, people will start to have eyeglasses that have this augmented reality extra contact layer available to them. And there are already things like um, the Meta 2 and Microsoft HoloLens that you can buy that have this kind of augmented reality overlay. And it's really down to when will this become commonplace in the consumer world? For instance, when will your normal glasses have this kind of overlay? Wow, this is just opening up a completely new and different industries for so many people. I mean, will marketing companies or will particular brands have further opportunities to to market their goods in a different way if we were walking down the aisles of a shopping centre with smart glasses? Oh, my gosh, yes. The advertising side would be used and smart glasses would also have cameras. And, you know, we'd also see the increasing use of cameras in store displays And with facial recognition technology and emotion recognition technology, you'd be able to, as a store owner, take a look at the demographics of people at particular advertising um, displays or displays of a new product and be able to judge the reactions of different demographics like, you know, females between the age of 20 and 25, for example, using facial recognition technology, you'd be able to segment what kind of people are stopping and for how long and what the expression on their face was. Wow. So the, for the people that, are, like I myself, I don't even like using those Woolworths uh, shopping cards because I know that they can track certain information about what I'm buying, where I'm buying it, and when determining what's happening in my life. So for people that don't want a part of this and want to maintain some sort of privacy in the future, where do we stand? Well, I hear you. And in fact, privacy is one of the things that I talk about all the time um, from the perspective of we really do need to protect people's privacy. And I'm not 100% sure where that's going to go because with all the technologies that we have and social networks, it's getting more and more and more invasive. And at some stage, I think people are just going to say no, but it may be too late um, with all these cameras around who are able to recognize us just by our faces, um, much less actually signing up to anything special. Are companies starting to realise that they do need to do something other than just design good products? I mean, if they're looking for people's emotions when we're looking for things on the shelf now, are they realising that they need to connect with their customer a lot more in a, a new shopping era? I think so. And I think that these kinds of technologies will open up, um, as you've mentioned earlier, Candice, new ways for companies to really interact with people. And, you know, that would be a good use of these technologies. Yeah, yeah, it could um, create a lot of new products out there as well. 
That's right. You know, if you can figure out what really grabs people's attention and in particular different age groups or ethnicities or, you know, genders and, you know, and really target things. And, you know, that's where we're going is, you know, very targeted, very customized consumer goods. And if I look at customization, I can see a time in the not-too-distant future, probably a 10-year horizon, where we'll be using things like 3G printing to do mass customization on the spot. So, you know, not for food necessarily, but imagine that you go into a shopping mall and decide that you want a new dress, and you might be able to see that you know new dress in lots of different styles on an avatar of your body, which is a 3D scan of your body, and be able to pick out the exact fabric and fit that you want and then have it printed while you wait. Oh, my goodness. That would be life-changing for so many. I hate getting changed in uh, the changing rooms. It's such a pain, particularly in winter when you've got so many clothes on. (laughs) Exactly. Or, you know, you see something and it's, you know, you love it, but it's not your size or it doesn't, it fits mostly, but not in one particular part of your body. Wouldn't it be great if everything that you wanted to buy was absolutely custom fit to make you look gorgeous and you could see yourself, you know, from a 360 walk around before you commit to buying it? Absolutely. This is exactly why we are waiting for this technology. Yeah. And you could send it to your girlfriends too to get that consensus opinion before you buy that dress for, you know, a special occasion. Wow. Life is changing uh, rapidly. It surprises me that so many supermarkets are having major investments now in the, the development and growth of their supermarkets when all of this technology is just around the corner and it looks like they'll have to invest more. Well, I think technology is going to be an ongoing investment. And there's one other area that I'll share with you that we didn't touch on yet, and that is robots. We're going to be seeing a lot of them too. And in fact, I just was reading about a retail robot that is being trialed in a hardware store in San Jose. Um, It's the Orchard Supply um, store. And you walk in and it's It's a vaguely humanoid type of robot that has a screen in front with multiple cameras and it's able to scan things. So if you're like me and you go into a hardware store and you need something, like you might have a bolt or a screw or some other widget that you need to find another one just like that, well, this robot can scan whatever you've got in your hand and on its display it will show you... um, a list of things, you know, is it this one, this one, this one, you know, and you've got a picture on the screen and you can say, yes, that one. And it will walk you to the place in the hardware store where that particular widget is located. Wow, that is insane. Now, where does that leave? I mean, for big multinationals like Bunnings, for example, they could, you know, have that kind of investment of a robot in each store. Where does that leave our small retailers, those family businesses that have been around for so long that can't afford that kind of technology investment? Well, for the smaller retailers, I think it will come down to personal service. I think in the big retail stores like a Bunnings, you know, you walk in and you're not quite sure what it is you're looking for. You try to find a person um, and a lot of times they don't know the specific of what you're looking for and they have to find somebody else and then they sort of point you over to aisle 16 and then they don't tell you where on aisle 16 you're sort of left to wander around. You know, having a robot that could help with that sort of thing too, I think will drive up sales. That is a true convenience and uh, and as you just said, if those customer relationships aren't there and regularly maintained with the smaller retailers, I can imagine that, that that would be something that people would just opt for. They know that they can walk in and just find what they want very quickly. That's right. But I do think a lot of people do like to shop local. I certainly do. I like walking down the street where I live and talking to the shop owners And you know what? I get great service from people where I frequent their business on a regular basis. And I think at our core, us humans, we're still social people. Yes, yes. So we want that interaction. That's right. So for me, you know, there are times when a robot would be great, but other times when I really would like to talk to the local shop person. 
Very interesting insights. It's uh, the in-demand keynote speaker on the future of technology, Shara Evans from Market Clarity. Thank you so much for joining me on The Home Run. And I'm going to put all of your contact details for people that might want more up at 949powerfm.com.au. Thanks so much, Candice. It's great being on your show.